You know where you're not likely to see any bad news about the billionaire media tycoon Michael Bloomberg, the guy who's just trying to buy the presidency through the Democratic Party. You won't see any bad news about him, no critical news about Bloomberg on Bloomberg. Bloomberg is actually a pretty big media company named after him, Bloomberg News, pretty reputable. Of course, it tilts left, as all media do, but it's a real company. Uh, not anymore, though. Ever since Michael Bloomberg, the man, threw his pint-sized hat into the ring, Bloomberg, the media empire, hasn't criticized him. Of course not. They're not allowed to. He's the boss. And he's made it crystal clear, only attack Trump. I suppose in many ways that's completely fair. Bloomberg, the man, built his own media company called Bloomberg News. Why can't he toot his own horn? There are so many other media companies in America, it probably won't make a real difference, other than people won't be able to trust Bloomberg, the company, quite as much anymore. In fact, Bloomberg has now made his company the issue. Um, maybe other media will start doing stories about just how deeply in bed with communist China this supposedly capitalist tycoon has gotten. I mean, just watch this. The guy makes Justin Trudeau look like a Sinophobe. I have literally never even seen a Chinese diplomat say something this crazy. The, the, the Communist Party wants to stay in power in China, and they listen to the public. When the public says, I can't breathe the air, Xi Jinping is not a dictator. He has to satisfy his constituents, or he's not going to survive. He's power. not a dictator? No, he has to. He has a constituency to uh, to to, to uh, um, uh, answer to. Doesn't and have a vote. He doesn't have a democracy. He doesn't. That he's doesn't not held mean he can survive if his, if his advisors I mean, is, is gave the him the check on him. Just a revolution. Yeah, I can have a revolution. Nobody. Su well, no government survives without the will of the majority of its people. Oh, holy cow! I mean, when Trudeau says that. Uh, he sounds dumb and naive. When Bloomberg says that, it sounds terrifying because we know he's not dumb and naive. But my point is Bloomberg the man says, trust Bloomberg, the company, which says trust Bloomberg the man. And while it's all a bit much, and Bloomberg has more than $60 billion he can throw at other media companies too, by the way, he could pretty much just buy every single TV station and newspaper in America. If he really wanted to, he's got enough money, though there are antitrust rules that would stop that. I'm not so sure it would work because people would resist. It'll be fascinating to watch in any event. But my obvious point is, if you want bad news about Bloomberg the man, you'll have to look somewhere else besides Bloomberg the media company. So what about in Canada where 99% of all newspapers are now on Justin Trudeau's payroll? I don't mean 50% or even 90%. I mean almost all of them. Name me a single newspaper and, and I'll answer because it's easy. Because there was already an oligopoly, a few big companies controlling everything. So if you name the Calgary Herald or the Edmonton Journal or the Ottawa Citizen or Vancouver Sun, Vancouver Province, Montreal Gazette, Regina Leader Post, Saskatoon Star Phoenix, National Post, Toronto Sun, Edmonton, Ottawa Sun, Calgary Sun, they're, they're all just one company, right? It's called Post Media. And that company gets $140,000 a week from Justin Trudeau. Those are just the daily newspapers. I don't have time to read out all the names of the weekly newspapers or specialty newspapers owned by Post Media, and that's just one company. But there are only a handful of companies that cover, seriously, 99% of all the media. I'm not exaggerating. The Globe and Mail, the Toronto Star, the regional BC papers, the Atlantic papers, 99% of the newspapers in this country are part of the bailout. So I'm not so worried about Bloomberg. He's huge, but he's just one guy with one company. If he buries bad news about himself, you'll probably hear it from someone else. But what about in Canada, where I swear I do not exaggerate, 99% of the media are in league with each other now. They're all in it together now. And by that, I mean they have all taken the plunge and taken Justin Trudeau's government bailout. They're all in it together now. It's exactly what I said would be impossible for Bloomberg, even though he's so rich, because he literally would not be allowed to buy 90% of American media because it would be an illegal trust, an illegal monopoly. He would be stopped. Well, we have that in Canada, but it's 99%. Oh, and they have a lobby group, as you would expect. 
They got their $600 million newspaper bailout. That's the newspaper side. The CBC gets another $1.5 billion direct from Trudeau. All these groups want to keep the party going. It's your money. So they're adverse to your interests and they lobby Trudeau to get it. And look at the main story on the front page, as it were, of their lobby group's website. This is their main story today. Media companies call on Parliament to support policies that favor trusted sources of original news. So they just said it. Not to you. Like Bloomberg, they don't report embarrassing things about Bloomberg. When Canada's media cartel announces their plans that are adverse to consumer choice or to freedom or to competition, they're not going to shout it out to you. They'll put it on their lobbyist website and target it to Parliament. Not on the front page of the newspapers that, you know, go to mere citizens. I'm sorry, but the newspapers don't value you anymore. The TV stations don't value you anymore. You used to be the center of things in the media. You paid a subscription fee for a newspaper. You bought it at a newsstand. Your eyeballs were valued to advertisers, but neither of those things are really true anymore. You probably get your news for free, probably on the internet. And sure, your eyes are still worth something to advertisers, very much so, but probably not to companies buying half a page of ads in a printed newspaper. Probably do a Facebook ad or a Google ad or something like that. So you aren't really even part of this discussion anymore, other than the source for tax dollars that Trudeau will extract from you and give to newspapers that you don't even read anymore. Scroll down the, the page a little bit. Look at who signed this begging letter. It's everyone. La Presse and Le Devoir, those are two left-wing Montreal newspapers. National Observer, that's the far-left news website in Vancouver, but it's actually a propaganda site. It was started by the sister of Joel Solomon, the creator of the Tides Foundation. Post Media's on there, Toronto Star's on there, the CBC's on there. These companies used to actually compete against each other once upon a time. They used to compete against each other hammer and tong, but now they're partners, they're allies, because they have the identical self-interest now, working together to pressure Justin Trudeau's government to give them more of your money. They're allies now, they're not competitors now, they're allied to press Trudeau to give them things that they can't convince you to give them directly as a customer. And what will they do in return for Trudeau? Well, they just said, didn't they? They want Trudeau to favor them and they'll return the favor like Bloomberg to Bloomberg. Favor them over the handful of holdouts who don't take the bailout. I can think of four in the whole country. Us here at Rebel News, I think we're the biggest. True North, that's Candace Malcolm and Andrew Lawton and, and friends, great people. The Post Millennial, have you been to that website? Good stuff, good work. And Blacklocks, I've mentioned them before, they're a small Ottawa-based news website. The total number of staff at all four of these independent media I just named, including us, it's got to be less than 50 people. In the whole country, we're the 1%, but not the richest 1%, as that term is often used. We're the independent 1%. We're the 1% who aren't on the take. And that's what the media party wants to change, and you bet Justin Trudeau does too. Here, let, let's go through this weird lobbying letter. And it was published just two days ago. It's... it's, it's it's sort of strange, fancy that, I don't think it was on the front page of your newspaper that you might have read. It was just on the front page of their lobbying website. Although they were talking about you and what you'd be allowed to read and what you wouldn't. Here, let me go through this letter that was sent to Parliament. Media companies call on Parliament to support policies that favor trusted sources of original news. That makes me laugh. Really, and, and this is going to shock you. Sorry to ruin the suspense, uh, spoiler alert. They think that they're the only trustworthy ones. And I suppose they are. Um, they're the only ones that Justin Trudeau can trust to, to give them his money, your money. So if that's what they mean by trust, the only newspapers that Trudeau can trust, they're right. Trudeau doesn't trust us, that's for sure. He keeps trying to censor us, either by calling the cops on me for writing a book about him or 
banning us at the Rebel and our friends at True North from the leaders debates. Remember that happened in October. So it's, I suppose, true that the media party are the only trustworthy media if it's Trudeau's trust that counts as opposed to your trust that counts. I put it to you that it's the opposite. We, the 1%, the tiny band of rebels and our allies, we're the only trustworthy ones that you can trust not to be paid off by the people we're supposed to be holding to account, Justin Trudeau and his government. How can you take money from someone you're covering? They keep talking about who's trustworthy and they have decided who will decide. They will. Get this, I'll read some more from their letter. As a result of those discussions, CBC Radio Canada and the Winnipeg Free Press launched a pilot project in Winnipeg, sharing resources on weekends and cross-linking trusted news content on their websites to better serve that community. The group is continuing to explore other areas of possible collaboration. Oh, okay. So it's Trudeau CBC, the official state broadcaster with government journalists. They'll decide who's trustworthy. They just said so. And they'll promote those voices using government money. They just said so. Let me read some more. The journalism being produced every day by people in your community is important. Now more than ever, we encourage you to support Canadian media in your community. The letter says, a strong democracy depends on diverse sources of trusted news. We all have a role to play. What does that mean? I'm in the community. We're all in the community. I'm Canadian. We at the Rebel meet the term diverse, if by that you mean different points of view. We're different than the other guys. But what's that trusted part again? Trusted by whom? I don't trust the CBC or the Toronto Star or many of the other media on the bailout now. Maybe they don't trust me in return. Many Americans don't trust Bloomberg media is reporting anymore, but at least in America, they have other choices. And in America, Bloomberg hasn't asked the government to favor his personal company. And that's what these Canadian grifters just did. They already command 99% of the market. Now they're trying to decide who is or isn't trustworthy, and they want Trudeau to enforce their definition. They said so. They want to change the laws and the policies of Trudeau's government to favor them. This letter is written to the government. Who pays them? Earlier this month, the Heritage Minister Stephen Gilbo, a longtime Trudeau ally, a convicted criminal, by the way, radical environmental activist for years. Here he is being arrested a little while back. Um, He went to CTV to talk about government licenses uh, to prove you're trustworthy. Remember this? To be, to be fair, you've got an agency that wants to enhance its scope of powers to determine what's a trusted news source. So the first question will be, who's to define that? You've got uh, a lot of no, these this groups... Is a re- this is a, a recommendation, they, Evan. Okay, it's no, not, they, but they the recommend- CRTC hasn't decided... Okay, anything. but they're recommending that. They're recommending that yeah. air, content they're providers uh, have to register and get a license. So how will this work? How are you going to regulate websites? How are you going to register all that? Are you, do you buy these recommendations? Well, the, I mean, the re- one of the recommendations, so you're talking about a, cup, a couple of different things here, but as far as the licensing is concerned, is if you're a distributor of content in Canada, and obviously, you know, if, if you're a, if you, if you're a sm- very small media organization, the requirement probably wouldn't be the same as if you're Facebook or, or Google, um, uh, so the, 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 there would have to be some proportionality uh, uh, em- embedded I- into this, but we, we would ask that they have a license, yeah. Yes. Do you really think that was a gaffe, a mistake? Of course it wasn't. The second item on Gilbo's official to-do list, his mandate letter sent to him from Trudeau, is to censor the internet. It's his job description, according to Trudeau. Still, it was a bit startling to hear it spoken that way. Like I say, normally this sort of weird lobbying and censorship isn't published to the population at large. Like I say, Bloomberg, the company, doesn't report bad things about Bloomberg, the man. And this was a case of the media actually reporting bad things about the plans for the media. What a PR mistake. So Gilbo was sent back out the next day to try to clean up the damage. Uh, what 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 we are saying is that we will not ask m- news organizations to have any to have license 
uh, and, and I refer people to, to the report, which, which does make a rec uh, an independent panel that makes a recommendation that on the issue of discoverability, a media organization would need to have a license. But that we're not, I, and, and media can, can, can be confusing, I, I recognize that, because the report talks about media, but not necessarily in the sense necessarily of news agencies, and, and maybe the confusion comes from there. Well, thank you very much. But he didn't really walk it back, did he? You heard him at the end. They're, they're going to license media companies. And maybe you saw the odd pundit squawk about what Gilbo was saying. Here's Robin Urbach. Yeah, they were very, very mad. Here's Andrew Coyne, of course. They were mad at Gilbo. And they said so. Here's Chris Selly of Post Media. They said so in their government-trusted, government-funded, controlled opposition kind of way. All those pundits I showed you there who were saying, this is outrageous. Yeah, well, two days ago, their bosses all wrote to Trudeau asking for exactly what Gilbo had proved, what he had suggested, new policies to favor them, the trustworthy ones. I've said it before, 99% is not enough for Trudeau. He wants the last of us one percenters, the one percent independent media, he wants us dead, arrested. He sent the cops after me. Soon there will be only two kinds of journalists in Canada. Those working for Trudeau, like Urbach, Selly, and Coyne there. And those banned by Trudeau. That's an excerpt from The Ezra Levant Show, which is a show I do every day. I do a monologue, interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. But you've got to subscribe to it, which you can do at premium.rebelnews.com.